What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Portigo and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be going in the studio and taking a look at some camera tests of the Panasonic S1 and S1R, looking at high ISO performance as well as exposure recovery and how well these codecs deal with editing and post-production. We're gonna start off with the Panasonic S1, looking at the high ISO performance in their Hybrid Log Gamma H265 codec, and then we'll go into the exposure recovery and then we'll check out the S1R. All the timestamps will be in the description below if you wanna jump ahead to any specific test. Without further ado, let's hop into the first one, looking at the ISO. So like I just said, this is the Panasonic Lumix S1, and we are shooting this in the H265 HVEC codec. So our base ISO is 400, so that's what we're starting at right here. As we go up to 800 ISO, and actually through these next couple ones, which I'm gonna jump through pretty quick because there's really no noise noticeable in these images. So we're up to 1600 ISO right now. We're gonna double that again and go up to 3200 ISO. Again, almost no distinguishable noise coming into the shadows, and we have a really nice dynamic range across all of the colors and all the different tones in this image. Going to 6400 ISO, we're starting to see a little bit in the shadows, but it's very, very minor and definitely not going to affect the image at all. 1200 ISO, we start to see a little bit more of that, and you'll actually start to notice a little bit of a color shift in the shadows, leaning a little bit more towards green. So if you jump between like the 25,600, which is incredibly impressive, almost no color noise added in here, and the earlier ones like the 400 or 800, you're going to see a little bit of a green shift in those shadows. And once we finally jump up to 51,200, you notice sort of an overall green shift, but still it's definitely usable and you could recover this in post-production. So that was the ISO performance test of the Panasonic S1. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed with how well this camera does in those higher ISOs. Up even to the 25,600, it is totally usable. And even in that 51,000, you can definitely tweak it a little bit and maybe have it usable in post-production. Now let's take a look at the exposure recovery and see how, how well this H.265 codec handles editing. So going into the exposure recovery, here is our correctly exposed image. So this is really what we wanna get all of our end results to. If you look at the left, you can see we're down one stop and that's gonna be our actual shot. And then on the right is the recovered shot. So what we've been able to bring back in post. Going to two stops, you can still get some pretty good recovery on this, being a little bit underexposed and not really getting too much color brought in in the shadows. Going to three stops, you definitely start to see a little bit of a shift and those blacks start to become a little bit harder to pull out. Going to four stops, you definitely start to see that green shift in there as well as some other colors just starting to distort or oversaturate and getting a lot of noise. And then five stops is completely gone. This is definitely not gonna be usable as well as four stops. I probably wouldn't use that in any project, but those two or three stops you could definitely get away with. Going back to our correct exposure, and now we're gonna go in the opposite direction, so overexposing the image. Again, it's laid out the same, so on the left is the actual shot with one stop over, and on the right is our recovered shot, and this is recovered at one stop, which looks pretty good and is definitely usable. At two stops, you can still recover almost all of those highlights. Nothing is really blowing out yet, and it still looks pretty solid. Going to three stops, we're starting to clip on all of those white areas and we're not able to bring really any of that information back. Again, same thing with four stops, as those highlight areas start to blow out, it becomes unrecoverable for our post-processing style. And then going to five stops, there's definitely nothing you can bring back in this shot. So I really wouldn't try to go more than three stops overexposed with this footage. So that was the exposure recovery of the S1. As you can see, it doesn't do a great job. You have a little bit of flexibility, probably two stops in either direction to be able to bring it back and recover it. But after that, it definitely falls apart. Now let's jump over and take a look at the ISO test of the Panasonic S1R. Now into the ISO of the S1R, starting at 100 ISO. We definitely get a pretty clean image here and as you would expect from the lowest ISO possible. Going up to 200 ISO, again, very low, so we're gonna have some very little noise in there and almost no color shift in the shadow areas. Going up to 400 ISO, if you look at that 300% crop in, you can start to see a little bit of sort of digital noise moving around, but there's no color added in. Again, with 800 ISO, it's just gonna amplify that a tiny little bit, but this is definitely still usable and you wouldn't see this zoomed out at 100%. Going to 1600 ISO, again, very clean and definitely usable. You're not gonna have any problems with shooting at 1600. 
and then up to 3200 ISO where we're starting to see a little bit more of that movement and maybe a little softening up of the image. But again, at 100%, you're not really gonna notice that and it's gonna be totally usable. Up to 6400, we're starting to see more of that noise and a little bit in the shadow areas, the really dark areas, we're seeing it quite a bit more like on the green next to the, um, the grass there. Going up to 12,800, we're starting to see a little bit of overall desaturation of the image, especially in the greens and a lot more noise in those shadows. So this is starting to become unusable. And then up to the highest ISO without going to the extended range, 25,600, you can see a huge shift in desaturation as well as a ton of noise. So this is definitely gonna be unusable. So the high ISO performance of the S1R, as you can see, it starts to fall apart a little more quickly and you get a lot of desaturation in those higher ISOs than you saw with the S1. It also has a lower ISO range from 100 up to that 25,600 versus the 400 up to 56,200. Now let's jump in and take a look at the exposure recovery of the S1R and see how this MP4 H.264 codec holds up in this exposure recovery test. So again, just like we did with the Panasonic S1, we're gonna start off with our correct exposure. So this is what we're trying to get all of our post-processing to look like. On the left, you have our one stop under or our actual shot, and on the right is the recovered shot and what we've been able to bring back. Going to two stops under exposed, you can see we can bring all of that back in the shadows. It does start to get a little bit tricky in the darker areas. Going to three stops, you definitely see a lot more noise in those shadow areas as we try to bring it back and we start to see a little bit of desaturation. Going down to four stops, a lot more desaturation with this and a lot more noise in that shadow area. And then down to five stops, it's super desaturated and a ton of noise in there. So this is definitely not usable. Going back to our correct exposure, and then we're gonna go in the opposite direction, so overexposing the image. Again, this is laid out exactly the same, so on the left you have our one stop over, and on the right is our one stop recovered, and what we've been able to sort of bring back from those highlights. Going to two stops, you're starting to see that we already can't bring a lot of those highlight areas back, like the paint chip chart on the side and the mug on the top. Going to three stops, this is completely unusable. You're getting a ton of blown out areas in my face and in the background. Going to four stops, similar things, even more blown out here and we're not able to recover really any of those highlights. And then to five stops, again, just like you'd expect, almost completely blown out and not recoverable at all. I found that the S1 definitely performs better with these exposure recovery tests. So that was the exposure recovery of the S1R. As you can see, it starts to fall apart a little bit quicker than the S1. You start to lose a lot more detail in the shadows and in the highlights, you can barely recover even two stops overexposed. So if you're going for video, I would definitely lean towards the S1, but if you want that high resolution, you can go with the S1R. If you guys have any questions about any of the tests that we ran or these cameras make sure to leave those in the comments and if you want to check these cameras out for yourself there's also going to be some links down there as well let me know if you guys enjoy these types of videos by hitting that like button subscribe for new videos every single week and i'll see you in the next one